Hello and welcome back to another episode of the Digital Health and Wearables series. Today I have another magnificent leader and guest for you, but before I go ahead, make sure you click the subscribe button and check all the previous content and share with your communities in healthcare. Also, let me acknowledge our partners, our content partner Fujifilm, the series partner Salesforce, leaders in healthcare and life sciences, and our global partner Spirit Digital, make sure you check them out. But without, without further ado, let me introduce you to Jonathan Bringas Dimitrius. He's a Chief Medical Communications Officer at NewCute, also co-founder and, and CEO at Lapsi Health and a Medical Education Ambassador at MedSkype. Jonathan, how are you? Hi, uh, Joel. Thank you for inviting me. Very well, thank you. Nice to see you again. I've been following your great work. You're very active in these days, pushing the big uh, digital health forward. So congratulations on that. Thank you very much. Thank you. It's a very nice work to do. Yeah. Uh, I'm going to go straight to the questions. So what is the role of wearables in the current and future evolution of digital health? Well, you know, um, wearables right now, they, uh, they are really important tools for, for the collection of data when we are thinking about diagnostics, when we're thinking about screening, um, when we're thinking about monitoring uh, chronic disease. And, um, and the role of, the, of these uh, wearables at the moment is, of course, to give us the data, but also the responsibility of the market of wearable technologies is to get diversified. Uh, we've seen a very... Um, I would say the dominant position of PPG, uh, a dominant position of ECG and um, and motion sensing. And I would like to see in the future to um, maybe we will be able to acquire uh, data also from wearables that give us, uh, you know, EEG sensing or to actually deliver treatments uh, by doing brain and neural stimulation um, or uh, the newest information technologies like NIRS. Uh, near infrared uh, spectroscopy that gives us a lot of feedback on uh, oxygenation uh, from wearable technology. And I, I think there are a couple of companies that are doing that right now. Um, so I see that uh, the wearable uh, market will slightly move in the future into to, uh, create the creation of better data acquisition techniques, uh, whether it is respiratory, you know, aside from SpO2, um, whether we're talking about um, increasing the, the data points or the biomarkers that we can actually collect. And of course, that will impact in the way we diagnose disease, the way we screen disease, and the way we treat disease. Oh, brilliant. I do, do agree with you. Things are moving really fast and, and the wearables are becoming more intelligent and also playing a crucial role in data acquisition. Now, as you know, many companies are even thinking and talking about collecting data without wearables, which is a different ball game, but that's, that's probably in the near future. But thank you for that, Jonathan. Moving on to the second question, uh, you say a lot that COVID has leveraged Latin Americans' digital health development. Could you tell us a bit more about that, please? Well, yes. Um, the thing is that Latin America, they had um, a very centralized uh, healthcare system. I think majority of countries in Latin America, they basically were basing their entire healthcare system in some capital cities and big cities, and then very small rural uh, posts or polyclinics. And um, let's take it as, as an example, for instance, Peru or Colombia. Um, we had the amount of doctors we had by, by 1,000 uh, people were less than 1.8. The amount of nurses was less than 1.4. So that being said, we didn't have enough uh, professionals. We didn't have enough services being offered in the countries. And then the COVID pandemic starts. And when we already had a problem with equity uh, that we were kind of like solving by travel and, um, you know, by um, some sorts of programs that governments did that are temporary programs the COVID pandemic disrupted completely. So patients could not be uh, seen in their general checkups for chronic diseases. Um, ambulatory uh, consults were just completely canceled. 
and um, and they were focusing 100% on the epidemiological problem that COVID brought. So the question was, how do we do to continue to deliver uh, healthcare to our patients in all these big, you know, rural spaces, millions of patients, uh, without having to make them come to the big cities and get in risk of getting themselves the COVID-19 and spreading it to their rural populations. Um, so there has been a, a very historic, I would say, rollout of digital health uh, regulation, uh, of digital health um, implementation. And of course, it starts in Latin America because we are a couple of steps behind um, uh, what the US or Europe have achieved already. It starts with telemedicine. Um, but there has been adoption as well. We see that it, it really increased the doctors that were at, at some point very conservative, you know, um, doctors that were always used to doing really presential work with the patient there, the typical physical examination, have migrated from those uh, physical contact type of consultations to an actual digital platform. And, um, and in, in countries like, for instance, Colombia or Peru, they are even now uh, creating the guidelines for which diseases we can actually see on telemedicine, which ones we don't, how do we actually um, make decisions, you know, based on, on, on clinical evidence to deliver the, the health equity that these patients need and to continue that, that uh, um, access for the future. So I think that, that in, in that sense, there's of course a lot more things that have to happen in Latin America. We have really big challenges ahead. Um, I think that we will start focusing on the biggest problems that Latin America has and then implement technology around them. Uh, that being said, maternal fetal mortality, for instance, um, infectious diseases, you know, that Latin America has big uh, numbers on dengue, malaria, yellow fever, tuberculosis. So focusing on those diseases and then implementing technology around them is going to happen in the near future. And I'm really happy to be in that space and work directly with, um, uh, politicians, with uh, big uh, healthcare groups, um, with, with uh, you know, key opinion leaders and trying to help them, you know, create that adoption in the provider, in the patient, and also, of course, help them to uh, maybe navigate that regulatory uh, sea that is a complete new ocean for them, but that is necessary to navigate so Latin America can get that access that uh, they have been needed for long COVID has helped to disrupt. Brilliant. Jonathan, thank you so much for, for that. I mean, you mentioned health equity, which is a very a hot topic now in the US, for example, as you know, and in Europe too. But Latin America and other regions, they present so many multi, multifaceted challenges. I mean, everywhere healthcare has these challenges, the remote monitoring, the roller areas. If we talk about, for example, in Africa, very, very difficult to kind of deliver healthcare to everybody. But he, you mentioned certain things that are common um, that are common challenges, but also in less developed countries, the challenges is a bit greater. So, I mean, you, you mentioned so many important things there, but definitely the COVID gave us a bit of a push to, to do things differently. It was a bit of a wake-up call to, I mean, to digitalize health systems and the health systems itself, they need to kind of be revolutionized. So thank you, thank you so much for that. And your great work there again. So you be very hands on, very active. Moving on to the third and last question is what uh, other digital health solutions do you think will revolutionize the market in Latin America, but also Europe and the United States? Well, you know, um, I think in Latin America, the next step is start to deploy wearables. Um, for many reasons, you know, I was just talking about maternal fetal mortality before, which is a massive problem. Uh, the biggest cause of this problem is preeclampsia and eclampsia. So basically hypertensive diseases during pregnancy. And um, they are not so difficult to prevent. If we think about it, you know, whether it is wearable uh, per se or devices that help you monitor, and let's just call them the entire uh, universe as remote monitoring. Um, what we could do with these pregnant women, if they had a, a blood pressure measurement device in their homes and they could actually be able to collect that information, put it on an app, send it to their practitioner, and we would be able to see the trends of, of uh, blood pressure coming up during pregnancy and call them to a consult at a gynecologist, we would already win the battle against maternal fetal mortality in Latin America. So I think there's there are simple solutions 
that can really be uh, implemented with remote monitoring that could really help us out. Same as temperature monitoring in terms of epidemiological or infectious diseases. You know, it's just something very simple, but that can be very powerful. So I think those things are really uh, what Latin America will see next in terms of digital health solutions. Uh, what I see in Europe and in the United States is a little bit shifting a little farther, let's say, to the digital therapeutics space. And that is also very exciting, how we can start, let's not, let's not say replacing, but we can definitely say complementing medication uh, regimes and, and treatments of chronic diseases with actual digital platforms. You know, how we can make patients change their behavioral uh, um, habits to a better and more healthy way. And if you think about it, as a doctor and as doctors, we always uh, get from our teachers in med school, you know, hypertension treatment. These are the medications. And then we have to tell the patient, you have to eat healthy, you have to stop smoking, you have to do exercise. You know, diabetes type two, these are the medications that they use and then they have to eat healthy, exercise, stop smoking and this and this and that, right? So every single disease has part of a, of, of a cure based on, on medication and part of it based on habits and, and lifestyle. And what these apps and what these solutions are doing is creating that behavior and helping these people get motivated, um, change their behavior, and then enhance the medication uh, regimes that actually bring better control on the chronic diseases. I think digital therapeutics is um, is a space that started with mental health and um, now it's moving, shifting to metabolic diseases like Livongo, Omara, and all those uh, really interesting uh, companies in the, in the metabolic space um, to cardiology. And I think in the future, we will see uh, DTXs coming up in rheumatology, in surgery, gynecology, in pediatrics. And it's only a matter of time until um, the space gets more mature to involve more and more solutions. But I mean, I just see that space as, as, as I see pharma a little bit, you know, uh, there's so many different types of medications for diseases. I can't imagine that there will be at some point also, I can imagine that there will be at some point also so many different types of DTXs for different types of diseases. Um, and that's really exciting from the digital, <laughs> from digital health space. Mm -hmm. Oh, fantastic. Thank you for that, Jonathan. I mean, so wearables and digital therapeutics, you know that I'm a big advocate for, where, for wearables. I've done many things, research, the keynotes. My big vision is that the wearables can change the world and more and more going forward, they play a very crucial role in healthcare of the future. So thank you for so much for highlighting that. And Jonathan, we, we came to the end of the episode. Uh, I want to thank you for your time, your expertise, your magnificent work, your insights. But I finish all my episodes in a peculiar way. It's not really a question as such. It's called one minute of fame. So you can men mention anything, personal achievement, your family, uh, 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 professional achievements, a shout out to any company, a anything whatsoever. Over to you, one minute of fame. Yes, so I think my, the only message that I would like to bring now is to pay attention to the underserved specialties in medicine for the development of digital tools. Um, I, that means women healthcare, pediatrics, very important, very important spaces that are, have been underserved for a long time. I was hearing a really interesting technologist the other day at a conference that said the, the, the um, in gynecology, you know, the speculum was invented in the 1860s. They, they still use it right now. This is something that we have to really look into. We, we have to serve the underserved. There's also market there. There's also a good business there. But most importantly, we can create equity. We can create access. And that's something that I advocate a lot for. And I would just like to, <laughs> to do a big shout out to all these companies in, the, in my network, in your network, on LinkedIn, YouTube, uh, look into those spaces because we can create a lot of impact uh, by putting our brains together. Thank you. Fantastic. Jonathan, thank you so much again for your time, for these magnificent uh, uh, insights. And I'm going to round up. Thank you so much. Thank you, Joao. I'm going to round up now. So thank you to our viewers and listeners. Make sure you subscribe, share this great content with your communities. I'm also going to post here the links to connect with Jonathan, connect with him on LinkedIn, on Twitter, ask him about his uh, great work. And uh, lastly, acknowledge our 
uh, partners, the content partner Fujifilm, series partner Salesforce, and our global partner uh, Spirit Digital. And I look forward to seeing you all next time.